Hello everybody, this is Brian Garvin. Um, I'm shooting this video from Oceanside, California and it's about 66 degrees, a totally beautiful day, not too windy or anything. Yesterday it was really good, um, the weather also, but it was like 68 degrees. But anyway, today I'm gonna talk about why I purchased stock in the Taiwan Semiconductor Company. The um, ticker is TSC, T is in Tango, S is in Sam, C is in Charlie. And um, it's an NYSC stock. So if you're trying to find it, it's, it's an NYSC, NYSE stock. It's not a NASDAQ. Okay, so what happened is um, I purchased this stock on January 2nd, 2024, right after the new year. Um, and I currently own 80 shares and I purchased these shares at $103 each. Um, about, not that exact amount, but within that. Um, and, and the total value was $8,161 at the time I purchased it. Um, now, the, this video being reshot at, you know, this video being shot now, March 20th, um, it's about 11 weeks later, and the stock is trading at $134.90. That was the last time I checked it um, last night. And uh, the total allocation um, for, right now is $10,792. So basically what happened is, is in the last 11 weeks, I made $2,630 in profit and the return is approximately 32%. So that, that's not too bad for 11 weeks. Um, the reason I bought this stock is because uh, this, this company, Taiwan Semiconductor, is a first class microchip building company and it's supplying Elon Musk um, with a key piece of technology that he needs. Um, and this is already proven. Elon Musk has already made many orders um, of this stock from his Tesla company and, and, and stuff like that. Um, Ken Griffin, people that are on board with this is a gentleman named Ken Griffin. He made $16 billion last year um, in, hedge, in hedge funds and has a large allocation to this company. So, so Ken Griffin's involved. Ken, another Ken, Ken Fisher, also invested $2 billion into this um, venture, um, or into this company, I'm sorry. Um, and Jim Simmons, who is the founder of Renaissance Technologies, uh, he invested $294 million into this uh, company. Um, Ray Dallow from Bridgewater Associates, uh, he's a billionaire hedge fund manager and Stanley uh, Druckenmiller, okay, and Stephen Cohen, who, who is also a billionaire hedge fund manager. Um, and he's also the owner of the New York Mets, and they are all invested in this AI 2.0 project. Um, it's not actual AI, but it's the backbone to AI. In other words, AI 2.0 needs this company for their microchips, basically. Um, and all these people that I just mentioned are, are the Godzillas of the Godzillas of Wall Street. They're the real titans. I mean, they're the real big time players. Um, as I mentioned before, um, this company will supply the microchips for Elon Musk's uh, new project, and I'm going to go over that real shortly. Um, right now, Elon Musk is worth about 215 billion. In case you haven't researched him too much. Um, so he must be onto something here with this. So, and, th and th that, that's kind of what sparked my interest. If the richest guy in the world is going to use this technology, or at least we, we, we strongly feel he is, um, based on past orders with this company for Tesla and things like that. Um, Elon hasn't went public with this yet. So you're actually in early, believe it or not. Um, even though it has a high market cap, you're still in early. And I'll get to the market cap later in this uh, video. But he's going to, it's going to, I said this a few times, he's going to be the main, it's, it's, Taiwan Semiconductor Company is going to be the main supplier of microchips to the AI company he's building right now. Um, I'm going to go into the company he was with before and all this other stuff, but I, I'm working up to that. So please be patient. Um, because of Tesla, he has like the deepest knowledge of, of AI you can ever get. I mean, he's a genius when it comes to AI, so, so he's not new to this or anything. He's not learning. He knows it, and, and he knows it very well, better than anybody on the planet. Um, so if you do decide to get into this stock, um, it, it could give you a really good bump in your portfolio, and it's just position right, and I'm gonna go into that again later. Um, the, the AI boom is like being on the internet 
1995. I mean, AI is going to be a $47 trillion industry by 2030. So you could imagine um, how much growth potential there is in a stock like this. Um, AI adoption is happening right now 42 times faster than the internet was being adopted in 1995. So it, it's just, it, it's not going to take forever to see great returns. Um, now, gains from AI stocks can be even bigger and, and faster than what we saw from the 99, you know, the internet stocks that, you know, in the 1990s. Um, what happened was um, Elon Musk founded OpenAI. He was, and, and he um, he actually left OpenAI a few years ago, that, which is which is the company behind ChatGPT. I'm sure all you guys have heard of Chat ChatGPT, or most of you have. Um, the reason he left is he didn't like the direction his other partners were going with the company. Um, and now he's working on his own project. And, it, and, it, and the new project he's working on is called um, XAI. Um, so all with his, all of his experience with Tesla, OpenAI, um, it gives him a huge, a huge advantage against his competitors and take, and he has the money to take this company you know, to the top, basically. He has all the money he needs to get this company going the way it needs to go um, there is also another company he had experience with a lot of you probably haven't heard of it I didn't hear of it until I researched it it's called DeepMind and uh, that was an artificial intelligence company that Google acquired um, now I don't think there's um, anyone even close to Tesla on solving real-world AI problems I mean their self-driving cars are off the hook you, that, that takes so much AI, it's not even funny. Um, so he has experience to do this, um, for, I mean, to launch his XAI project. And once it takes off, he's gonna need specialized con computer chips. That's where semi, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor Company comes in. Um, they produce some of the most advanced computer chips in the world. Um, and they're working with Elon and his self-driving cars. So if they're going to do that, then the more than likely they're going to use this company for his new project. I, I, he, he, I'm sure Elon only wants to work with a top-notch company he can trust. The Washington Post asked him about his new venture in July, and Musk said, we are, we are going to work with Tesla on the silicon front and maybe on AI, the AI software front as well. So that's why I personally believe that's... Um, they're going to be the company to supply uh, that they also supply tex Tesla but they're also going to supply his new project X XAI and you can research this on the internet it's pretty easily um, available um, the company Taiwan Semiconductor is, is based abroad so a lot of Americans don't even know about this company yet so there's not a lot of American money in this company even though it's, it's, it's got a pretty high market cap um, they also make microchips for advanced weapon systems like the Air Force's uh, F-35 fighter jet. So the government um, already considers them a, this company a key to national security. So this is a, a company that's kind of already known in certain spot or in certain you know in certain areas like the government. Um, and they're also about to spend forty billion dollars to build a new uh, three point eight million um, square foot. Uh, plant near Phoenix, Arizona, which will be over a thousand acres that will, and this will open in 2025. So, so a lot of the big things that are happening with this company haven't even started yet. Um, they're going to build another plant in the same area that will open in 2026. So they're going to have two plants in Arizona. One is going to be built in 2025 and the other is going to be built in 2026. Um, they're also expanding into Japan and Germany. So they don't want to be just stuck in Taiwan in case something ever happens, the company can still operate. You know, there's been rumors about um, China possibly invading Taiwan, just like the Russians invaded, um, you know, Ukraine. Um, so if that happens, their, their company can still operate because they're, they are, they're, they're building locations in other areas and it won't shut them down. Um, It'll also help them avoid supply chain bottlenecks, which are common, you know, especially in rough times. Some, sometimes stuff has problems going from one country to another and geopolitical uncertainty, certainties, which I kind of just mentioned. Um, this is the most advanced semiconductor company. So they, they're in a position to leverage the AI 2.0 boom, which is coming up in the next year or so. 
Um, it hasn't really come to fruition yet. So that's why this makes us such a great company. Um, there are, there are, um, Tesla is already placing orders, like I mentioned before, with a Taiwan Semiconductor to fulfill their self-driving cars. So this isn't like a new company to Elon Musk. I mean, they're already doing business with them, with him, sorry. And the best way to profit from the AI trend uh, now is to get in a company like this that supports the backbone to it. Um, sometimes these companies come out better than the actual you know, AI companies. Um, so if you wanna get some shares before Elon announces this to the world, um, he is using this company, you can have a good advantage here. Um, Taiwan Semiconductor Company um, lagged the AI chip boom of 2023, which means we still have a small window to get these shares at a great price. Um, Elon didn't spill his, you know, spill his guts about this company in 2023, or we might, the market cap would be so high we wouldn't have a chance to make too much profit. Um, they expect 50% annual growth in its AI chip segment over the next several years. And, and keep in mind, when people say this, professionals that are bonded, licensed, insured, all that, they could be conservative figures. I'm not saying they are or aren't, but more than likely they might be a little conservative. But that's just my opinion. Um, and after, after the year's over, they expect uh, sales growth for the long term to be about 20% a year, which is which is decent. Most stocks, stocks don't make 20% a year. So if you have a bunch of extra stocks in your portfolio and you want a little bump in it, it wouldn't be a bad idea to, you know, at, a, at the current price of 130 something a share to, to purchase 10 or 20 or 30 or 50 or whatever. Um, it, it might be a really good play at this point. Um, one of the things that I, I, you know, if you get in the right AI plays, you know, in the next two to three years, um, you could make more money than you ever thought possible. Um, these figures that I've been reading are kind of conservative, but you know, that they have to do that. I mean, I've read, I've read um, stuff on NVIDIA and all that that were really conservative and I missed the boat on that because I, it's one of those things they just, I didn't believe in the company. I didn't really understand it at that point. Um, had I have been smarter and got in it, I could have been a millionaire, but that's okay. We all miss plays. There's always new plays to get into. And that's why I'm telling you what I'm involved with at the time, so you could decide if you want to do it or not. Um, if you ignore certain opportunities that are available to you or you get in the wrong plays, um, it might take you you know, three decades or so to catch up. And, and I don't want to see that happen to you. I want to see you get in the right place. Even if, I mean, you don't have to spend a ton of money, even a two or three grand in the right play can make you, you know, a lot of money. So Musk was also the founder of ChatGBT, like I told you before, and the engineers who developed it are now working for Musk. So they actually moved from ChatGBT to Musk because they're loyal to Musk because he's, you know, he's the one who started it. And um, his XAI project is, is to develop a better version of the chatbot. See, a lot of the, the problem that I think he had with the chatbot, the original one, ChatGBT, is it kind of, there were some ethical issues with how it spit out answers and things like that. And he wants to make sure that the chatbot he's building is going to build out more honest, more to the point type answers. Um, I don't know all the details behind that, but that's just a little bit that I know. And I wanted to share that with you um, because you probably don't know that either. Um, or you do, I don't know. Um, but this, this stock can still make a lot of people real rich. It's not too late. Um, my recommend, well, I can't recommend because I'm not a financial advisor, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to allocate up to 5% of your stock, stock portfolio to this play. Um, you can also place a 30% trailing stop loss on the position. So if for some reason, you know, bad things happen to the company and you can eventually get out without losing more than 30% of what you put in. Um, you know, that's just a, a normal thing a lot of people do with anything they get involved with. Um, but that's your, 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 that's your option. You don't have to do that. You can just keep an eye on the market and if you ever decide to sell, just sell. That's the other option. And right now, as I research this, the mar market cap 710 billion. It, it, it seems like a lot, but you have to understand the AI industry will be 47 trillion by 2030. So 700 billion for a major player in the company 
it's actually small potatoes. I mean, it could, it could easily seven or eight X over the next, you know, I, I mean, if it does what it's supposed to, um, it's speculative. Every, every stock play is spec has some speculation to it, but there's no reason it couldn't be five trillion in the next, you know, ten, you know, seven or eight years, um, because you know, the the microchips that they have, they have patents on certain ones. I don't remember the exact names of them, but they have patents on certain ones, and that means no one else can use those but them. Um, so even with the high market cap, there's still plenty of room for growth, long-term growth. Um, I plan on holding the stock for at least five to eight years, and, and then I'm going to reevaluate and see how fast it's growing, and then um, take the profits and maybe allocate them to another up-and-coming stock down the road. Um, that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. Um, so the last thing I want to say is, is uh, you know, it's totally up to you. If you want a nice little bump in your portfolio, give it a shot. If not, that's totally up to you. I still love you. Um, if you like this content, please subscribe and click the notification bell. And as I make videos like these, you'll continue to get them. I, I have another stock play, I mean, sorry, artificial intelligence stock I'll be talking about relatively soon. If I could get the video out by tomorrow, I will. If not, it'll be two or three days. And um, I'm going to have another one coming out after this that's going to get, you know, give the third play I'm in because I'm in three plays for AI stocks right now, three. And um, that's about it. Um, I'll keep in touch and have an incredible day.